ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا أَمَّا بَعْدُ فَإِنَّ أَصْدَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَخَيْرَ الْهَدْيِ هَدْيُ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَشَرُّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا فَكُلُّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٌ وَكُلُّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٌ وَكُلُّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي انزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا الحمد لله رب العالمين all praises due to allah who has blessed us with islam who has guided us through iman and who has adorned us with ihsan. <coughs> All praises due to Allah who has revealed the scripture unto his servant and he has made no crookedness therein. All praises due to Allah for his bounties, his graces, which he has showered upon us by guiding us, by sheltering us, by feeding us, by blessing the overwhelming majority of us with good health. Alhamdulillah. Qul bi fadlillahi wa bi rahmatihi wa bi thalika fal yafrahu wa khayrun min ma yajma'un. Say in the grace of Allah, Qul bi fadlillah wa bi rahmatihi and in his mercy. Fa bi thalika fal yafrahu. In this let them rejoice. Brothers and sisters, we should be joyous people. Not out of any sense of exhilaration because of some frivolous reasons. So we shouldn't be joyous people because the music sounds good. Or we shouldn't be joyous people because the food was so good at the dinner in and of itself. We shouldn't be joyous people because of some external, extraneous reason that has, is totally disconnected for our, our, the reason that we're on this earth. We should be joyous when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us to fulfill our purpose. Allah ta'ala mentions in the Quran وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِعَبُدُونَ I've only created the jinn and the humans that they worship me. So if Allah has blessed us to worship Him, if He's blessed us with the desire and the ability to get up in the cold morning and make wudu with possibly the cold water, to leave the comfort of our beds and to pray, if He's inspired us to take advantage of these days, which we've mentioned previously, 
as our Prophet وسلم, described the winter as Shita'u Rabi'un Mu'min. The winter is the springtime of the believer. Its days, its nights are long, so he has a lot of time to do qiyam and still get sleep. And the days are short and they're also cooled. Cool, in fact, these days they're cold. So it's easy to fast. So this is a time the believer should be praying at night and fasting in the daytime. And if he or she has been blessed with the desire or the propensity to do that, then for this reason they should rejoice. This is better than anything people can get from the dunya. What is better? To have a heart that's inclined to prayer a heart that's inclined to fast, a heart that's inclined to be charitable, to share of the bounties and the gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with, what's better? To have that, that heart that gives birth to those actions, أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَةً إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ is there not in the body an organ? If it's sound, the entire body is sound. And if it is corrupt, the entire body is corrupt. Verily, it is the heart. So what's better to have a heart that leads its limbs to pray? To have a heart that leads its limbs to fast? To have a heart that leads its hand to be a charitable hand? Or to have 10 or 12 million dollars? to own 10 or 12 of these buildings like this in Pleasanton. I own 10 buildings. Each one is at least 50,000 square feet. To have, to own an entire car lot. I not only own the lot, I own all the cars. Every time I sell a car, it's pure profit. I don't have to pay GM. I don't have to pay Ford. I don't have to pay Toyota. I don't have to pay Nissan, it all goes to me because I own the lot and I own all the cars. What's better, to have all of that or to have prayer being recorded for you with a sincere intention, fasting being recorded for you with a sincere intention, act charitable acts being recorded for you with a sincere intention, what's better? For the believer, the worship is better. And so this is what the believer rejoices in. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُ هُوَ قَيْرٌ مِّنْ مَا يَجْمَعُونَ It's better than all of their buildings and all of their cars and all of their houses and all of their whatever they can gather from this world. So we should be joyous. فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُ we shouldn't be depressed. A depressed Muslim, that should be a, an oxymoron. We should be sober. So we shouldn't be giddy and frivolous. But we should be, our hearts should be joyous. Because of the blessings that Allah Ta'ala has given us. The entire world as we know is caught up in memorializing Nelson Mandela, the great South African leader. And it's a cause for us to reflect. We shouldn't ignore the passing of Nelson Mandela. It's just another day in the dunya. There are events that happen, even the Quran records, because they're momentous events. Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Alif Lam Mim, Ghulibat Yurum, so Allah Ta'ala, He mentions in the Qur'an, a momentous event occurs, occurs. Muslims aren't involved in it. Muslims have nothing to do with it. 
He says, غُلِبَتِ الرُّومِ The Romans have been defeated. فِي أَدْنَ الْأَرْضِ In a nearby land. وَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ غَلَبِهِمْ سَيَغْلِبُونَ And after this defeat of theirs, they will be victorious. فِي بِدْعِ السِّنِينَ After a few years. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَمْرُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ بَعْدِ And this is Allah's affair. This is Allah's affair. Nelson Mandela's affair is Allah's affair. Whatever transpired in his life, whatever transpired in South Africa, whatever has transpired in the freedom struggle of the people of South Africa, and it wasn't just the freedom struggle of the African people. It was a freedom struggle that involved Africans and it involved Asians such as the many Muslims who were active in the struggle. It involved so-called coloreds, people of mixed race descent who were active in the movement. And the figure, the person that came to symbolize the movement was Nelson Mandela. What can we take from his life? To take from his life, we can look at the title of his autobiography. What is the title of his autobiography? Long Walk to Freedom. Long Walk to Freedom. In other words, the freedom of his people. It didn't happen overnight. He was in prison for 27 years and he struggled for two decades before even going to prison. It was a long walk. It was a long struggle. It was a hard struggle. It was a difficult struggle. And so is the lesson for us brothers and sisters. As Muslims find ourselves throughout the world, in this country even, struggling for our dignity, struggling for our rights in many instances, struggling to live a life that's reflective of the values of a, a revelation that was given to who, who we believe and understand to be the final prophet to humanity, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that these struggles, they're going to be long struggles. Nelson Mandela, when he discussed the freedom of his people, one of the, the things he said, to paraphrase him, he said, it's, he, this is a struggle is, is, is worth living for. In other words, I'll dedicate my entire life to this struggle. And it's a struggle worth dying for. So he knew that this might take my lifetime and it also might take my life. And so as, as Muslims, we should understand that we're not going to necessarily get what we aspire to overnight. Life doesn't work like that. We've been, we've been deceived by this modern condition that has commodified everything. And by in commodifying everything, it moves towards rapidity. Why? Because haste is consistent with the base desire of human beings. Haste is consistent with the nafs and mara bisu, that lowest aspect of, our, of who we are in our lowest form of human development. We want instant gratification. And so this is appealed to by this state of modernity that we find ourselves in. So we com it culminates in fast food. There was a time when usually women, I'm just expression of reality, I'm not trying to be sexist, would take great pride in staying in the kitchen long hours because they knew or believed that they were doing something 
that was of tremendous benefit and service to their families. Now women are told, why should you serve somebody? You should go out and get a job like your husband and force him to hire a maid to feed the family. Or the modern condition that tells you go out and get a job like your husband provides instant food. Don't worry about it. You can have the meal in half an hour. Just throw it in the oven, turn on the heat, and then go get it in half an hour and it's instant, it's ready. Both are consequences of this modern condition. And it doesn't just affect women, it affects men. Everyone's looking for the, not everyone, many people are looking for the ultimate hustle, the ultimate get-rich-quick rich scheme. Everyone's looking for big muscles with minimal time in the gym. Even, and this is a childish impulse. This appeals to men. We buy all the exercise machines, then throw them away in the garage. No, get your abs flat. No one wants to spend two years working at it. No, you can do it in, in two weeks. Just get the, ab, the abnormizer or whatever. And so we spend millions of dollars ordering the abnormizer and then we do it for two days. And then we look at our stomach, there's no six pack, we still have the one pack. <laughs> so we throw the thing in the garage. False advertisement, it didn't come quick. We want to get rich quick. No, don't spend your life saving for something, just charge it. Just charge it. People in traditional societies, when the, the idea of a credit card was introduced, they wouldn't even use it. The whole idea of getting something you didn't earn, that's what credit is. You get it, you didn't earn it. You earned it when you saved up for it and you paid for it. Credit allows you get it, you didn't even earn it. You might earn it later when you pay off the bills or you just might default and get the use of it, because we want the use now. There was a time, some of you remember this time, to get a house you saved up. You got houses in your 40s. No one bought houses in their 20s in this society. You saved your money, you bought a house. Or you saved your money, you put a huge down payment, because that was the only way you could get credit for a house. There was an easy, fast credit. Well, everyone now he wants a house, doesn't want to save up 20, 30 years. Doesn't want to get the house in the 40s, want the house in the 20s. 23 years old, I want a house. So, then we'll give you a house. And we'll take it back in four years. Because you didn't want to wait until you were ready for it. So we'll give you a house you're not ready for it. And then we'll take all your equity in four years, when you foreclose. We'll give it to you. No, if you look at Mandela's life, it's a lesson, patience. And this is a, a lesson that the Qur'an has emphasized and emphasized and emphasized. People want leadership. Now there are many, a lot of young, young uh, scholars no one wants to be an imam. Everyone wants to be over an institute of some sort. Look on the internet, there's hundreds of institutes proliferating while the masters are, are desperately advertising Islamic horizons. This website, that website, we need an imam. We need someone who's going to come and be patient with the problems of the people. We need someone who's going to be able to listen to the young teenager, yes, who's struggling with a drug problem. Or the girl who got pregnant. This happens in our communities. And she doesn't know what to do. She knows an abortion is haram. But if she tells her parents, she fears for her life. Who's going to bring prophetic wisdom to our communities? By patiently enduring 
the problems, the hardships, the triumphs, the setbacks, the victories, the defeat of the everyday people. That's the work of the prophets. There are people who spend their whole, whole life working. And then at the end of their life, Allah Ta'ala rewards them because this is from the Sunnah of Allah. <coughs> that's captured in the, the words of Ibn Ata'ila, the great Egyptian scholar and spiritual sage. When he said, Man ashraqat bidayatuhu ashraqat nihayatuhu. The one who has an illuminated beginning will have an illuminated end. The illuminated beginning is with hard work. So the person, they're inspired, they pray, they fast, every opportunity they get. They get up for Qiyam al -Layl. Their illuminated beginning is with their action and the illumination at the end is through the divine. Allah Ta'ala reveals, uh, not reveals, He gives them understanding. He gives them <coughs> deep insight into the nature of the human condition and the nature of the human soul. That's the illumination at the end. But it came on the basis of the illumination at the beginning. Now there are those they want the illumination at the end without the work at the beginning. Maybe I could just read a few books and I can get it. They see the people supporting someone. They're supporting them after they've served the community for 20 or 30 years. After they've worn out two or three cars after they've gone all over the, the region and even the country or even the world, exhausting themselves during a period there are no honorariums. And so the people, Allah Ta'ala leads the people to support them after those 20 or 30 years of service. Then someone comes along, they sees that, I want that. But they don't want to spend the time serving for 20 or 30 years so that that is the fruit that Allah gives them after they've cultivated the tree. Mandela got the fruit at the end, the fruit of, of seeing his people free. The fruit of the, the presidency, the fruit of the collapse of apartheid after a long walk to freedom, after 27 years in jail. As the Syrians say, Mabiji Balash. It didn't come for free and it didn't come cheap. It didn't come free and it didn't come cheap. There are too many people who want it free and they want it cheap. Because one of the greatest lessons of life have passed them by. Anything worth having has a steep, stiff price. Right, you want, you want a ring that's worthless? Get a quarter and go to the bubblegum machine. Right, you get a nice ring, you hold it in the light, you see a rainbow in it. It's 100% plastic. But is that, is, is that, if that's what you want, just go get it. Go for it. It's out there. This is what modernity does to seduce us. Says so you want it cheap, you want it easy, you can have it. You can have it cheap, you can have it easy. You can have it without paying any sort of a significant price for it. But if you want the real thing, don't take your quarter like you went to the bubblegum machine and then go to whoever's jeweler and think you're going to get a diamond ring that costs ten thousand dollars is not going to work. The guy's going to look at you like you're crazy. One of our problems is when the person who's become accustomed to getting his or her rings out of the bubblegum machine comes to us, we don't look at them like they're crazy. We look at them like they're credible. Because our standards have been lowered. But Islam came to raise our standards. So, brothers and sisters, we have to be patient. And we have to work. Mandela was patient and he worked. We have to be patient and we have to work. And if we're not patient and if we don't work, 
Don't expect to take that quarter and buy that $10,000 ring. It's not going to happen. Greatness takes sacrifice. Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَأَمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُقِنُونَ We made of them, referring either to the prophets of Bani Israel, Qatada, one of the great early commentators, exegetes, he said, أَتْبَعُوا الْأَنْبِيَاء We made leaders from the followers of the prophets. لَمَّا صَبَرُوا After they after they patiently persevered and went through the test and passed the test. And they were absolutely certain concerning our signs. They were absolutely certain concerning our signs. Then no doubt, it might not come today it might not come tomorrow, it might not come next week, it might not come next year, it might not come in the next decade, but it's coming. I have absolutely no doubt that it's coming. They were absolutely certain concerning our signs. We have to endure, we have to forge on. Our relationships are falling apart. Marriage is falling apart. So I just can't live with him anymore. Well, how long have you guys been together? Well, next week will make six months. MashaAllah. That's a, that's a really long time to determine you can't live with somebody. We have to patiently persevere. But they get on my nerves. Allah Ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْدُكُمْ لِبَعْدٍ فِتْنَةً تَصْبُرُونَ وَكَانَ رَبُّكَ بَصِيرًا We made some of you a tribulation for others. Will you not then be patient? And verily your Lord sees all. وَكَانَ رَبُّكَ بَصِيرًا He sees who's serious. He sees who's sincere. And He sees who's playing and joking. <laughs> Husbands are fitness for their wives in ways great and small. Throwing their socks everywhere. Or that's a small thing. Some might say it's a big thing. Or not keeping a job. Or whatever. Wives are fitness, tribulations for their husbands. Will you not be patient? The, the white people were a fitna for the African people in South Africa. Say the European descents. I've never seen a white person. The Boers and the Afrikaans were a fitna for the various African peoples. The African people were a fitna for the European PND descendant people. And one of the things Mandela did was to be patient and endure that fitna. And when he got free, one of the reasons he celebrated, he didn't initiate a bloodbath in South Africa, which would have been a bloodbath that might have lasted to this very day. Because the Africans had the numbers and the Europeans had the weapons. And so it creates what's called a balance of terror. Which is, which is a, a, in many instances, a constant, a, a, a conscious, rather, strategic tactic. We'll arm the minority and we'll allow the majority to be deceived by their numbers and no one will be able to vanquish the others. The majority won't be able to, to, to vanquish the, the minority because they're outgunned. And the minority won't be able to vanquish the majority because they're outnumbered. And so they'll just slaughter each other. 
Mandela was patient with the fitna and he understood how easy it is to fall into an irreversible spiral, downward spiral of violence. So he chose the difficult path, the path of peace, the path of reconciliation, the path of surrendering some of the rights that are due and owed and inherent and, and inherent to a particular people under certain conditions. Because he understood by so doing, he would avoid a bloodbath. A tasbirun. We have to understand if Allah Ta'ala is telling us this, this is the nature of our condition. <coughs> the kuffar, the kuffar, the arrogant, disbelieving people are a tribulation for the believers. The believers are a tribulation for the kuffar. There are people, they're troubled, they're deeply troubled by this gathering. What's wrong with those people? Why are they leaving their work, skipping their lunches for God? Some atheists are troubled, but they have to be patient, and we have to be patient. If Allah Ta'ala wanted, He could have made all of us atheists. Kun fayakun. If Allah Ta'ala wanted, He could have made all of us believers. Kun fayakun. And there wouldn't be tribulations of those sorts. If He wanted, He could have made all of us rich. The poor are a tribulation for the wealthy. And so how do you deal with that tribulation? Do you share the wealth? Or do you say, no, we don't want to pay any taxes. We don't want to pay for schools for poor people. They should pull themselves up by their bootstraps and build their own schools like we did. Well, how did you pull yourself up by your bootstraps? No, they, they should engage in 200 years of slavery. They should rob and steal people, people's retirement funds. Most, most investment bankers are conservatives. In New York, Wall Street, a large percentage, they live in Fairfield County, Connecticut. I tell you about Connecticut. They live in places like Greenwich, Connecticut. They're politically conservative. They don't want to pay any taxes for the poor people. The poor people should pull themselves up by their bootstraps. So are they saying poor people should open up investment banks and rob people's pensions and retirement funds like they did to pull themselves up by the bootstraps? Atasbirun, be patient. Allow your patience to be translated into compassion and empathy. And vice versa, rich people are tribulation for poor people. And some of the Mufassirin, they say, the poor people, they're, they're, they're led to say, oh, we wish we were like them, like Karun. That's a, that's a very bad thing to do. Look what happened to Karun. For khasafa bihi wa bidahil ard. The earth swallowed him in his nice house that the poor people were envying. It's better to be content with what Allah has given you. إِنَّمَا الْغِنَى غِنَى النَّعَى لَيْسَ الْغِنَى عَنْ كَثْرَةِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنَّ الْغِنَى غِنَى النَّفْسِ True wealth is not an abundance of material possessions. True wealth is contentment of the soul. That's true wealth. So be patient. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us to be patient people. To bless us to deal with, to deal with patience the tribulations he might expose us to in the context of our relationships in the context of our societies in the context of the world we find ourselves in may we be blessed to have the patience of the likes of a Mandela so that our will have a long walk a long beautiful invigorating walk not to freedom 
to Jannah inshallah because that's the end of our journey that's the end of our journey that is the end of our journey is Jannah وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَعُوا وَبِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَعُوا وَقَيْرٌ مِنْ مَا يَجْمَعُونَ أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله ولكم وسائر المؤمنين وقوم استغفر الله استغفر الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم اغفر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة كنت الوهاب ربنا أفرق علينا الصبر وثق قدامنا ونصورنا على قوم الكافرين ربنا أفرق علينا الصبر وثق قدامنا وتوفنا مسلمين وعفو عنا وفي لنا ورحمنا أنت مولانا فنصورنا على قوم الكافرين اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تعول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرا على من ظلمنا وانصورنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا بابلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين وكونوا مع الصادقين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أكمل الصلاة يا محمد الله